Hello there, Pan again. So a couple of weeks ago I went to go and visit the London Coin Fair, uh, which is just around the corner from the glorious leafiness of Russell Square's Park. And whilst there, as well as seeing lots and lots of lovely bits of gold and silver, I was met up with fellow YouTuber Backyard Bullion. Uh, I was very excited because I contacted the organisers in advance and they let me have an official pass. And the entire show was mostly full of tables and stalls crammed full of all sorts of exotic lovely shininess and there's just a, a few highlights included in this reel here. So of course I was incredibly excited when I spotted this stall here that has a wide selection of eight realis pieces, the uh, infamous odd pieces of eight. Uh, and you see, you see that the the odd ones look to be little more than just lumps of silver with a, a seal crudely stamped in them. Uh, and just over here we have some not quite so infamous uh, four realis pieces, most of these, which are in decidedly worse condition but a bit more affordable. And I have to say, I am very, very tempted. Uh, and I'm going to have a very quick word with the store holder and see if he'll be very generous and let me have a quick feel of these. And I've been given permission to actually touch these and flip them over, so let's have a quick look at the other side. So one of the nice ones that you get at these fairs is you also get, in addition to coins, quite a wide selection of medallions. Now, medallions are a little beyond my normal fare. But they are certainly an excellent one if what you're really, really interested in is getting some interesting historical portraits of key historical figures. So, for example, here we have a couple of very interesting portraits of Queen Anne. So, for example, if you wanted a really, really high-quality example of the uh, Jubilee head portrait of Queen Victoria, you could do a lot worse than picking up this piece here. Now, anyone who's been following my channel for a little while will know I had a little bit of a nasty run-in with uh, a very clear fake British trade dollar on eBay. Uh, but, you know, again, I'm getting very excited. I'm seeing all my favourite things available here today. So here we have a couple of genuine articles. And again, seeing them in the flesh, they're actually a, really a world away from what I was before. I mean, first of all, look at the luster on these. And you can see the bright, clean, almost kind of like white, silvery shininess on these. Very, very different from the murky depths I saw on the fake one. So a couple of very, very lovely coins. And again, I'm very tempted and my bank manager is not going to be a fan of me at this rate. Uh, and I'm joined now by the lovely, and I'm sure you're familiar with, Backyard Bullion, uh, who has um, likewise been here having a fun time at the coin fair. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Pan. It's a pleasure to be here and to meet you. I'm glad that you got that little secret package that I gave you, and I'm sure you'll tell your viewers all about that at some point in the future. But uh, yeah, coin fair. It's been quite a fun day uh, so far. I haven't finished. I've only halfway through my scouting, and uh, I thought your viewers might be interested in the pickups I've made. Let's put those actually in camera. I've got some thalas. So one of the cool things about the coin fair I find is that you can pick up some, maybe what you would deem as junk coins, but I really like these and they absolutely look fantastic. Uh, at pretty decent prices and I got these for £11 a pop, which is pretty much, I think it's just above spot price, I think they're about £10 each in terms of spot. Uh, also picked up a 1934 piece dollar, so not too shabby, all for very good prices. So yeah, quite enjoying the day. Um, I have to say I'm a big fan of these coins having just, I haven't seen these before, but in particular spotting, seeing the, um, the, yeah, there we go, the lettering on the edges, that's really interesting because the vast majority of coins you get is just, you know, kind of a fairly, relatively boring reeded edge, but getting something deck more subtle and nuanced like that is a lot tougher and not as common as I'd like, but... Yeah. I agree. I mean, these, these look absolutely fantastic when you get the edge all nice and close like that. 
and when you get a roll of them. So I did a, I did an In Focus Friday on this a couple of months ago, and I've been wanting to pick up more of these. And uh, you'd be surprised how much they go for actually on eBay. Even though they're junk silver, they go for like 14, 15 quid sometimes. So to get them for 11 pounds each is uh, a nice little bargain, really. So uh, I'm secretly actually quite jealous now. <laughs> Um, I'm actually doing a similar thing. I've ordered a, um, basically because I get lots of kind of like crown sized silver coins and some of them are not so good quality and some of them are duplicates. So I figured, well, if I'm going to be stacking them, I may as well put them in a tube. So I've actually ordered myself a tube now, which I can, you know, start it's, filling with those. It's, it's a good plan. It helps with the goal setting, which I think is really important. A lot of people sometimes forget about with goal setting. And if you've got that tube that you want to continue completing, it really does help spur you on to make sure that you find the coins that you want. So this is the first six plus the one I've got at home, seven now, lucky number seven. Hopefully we'll get a nice round 20 at some point, but uh, yeah. I see that you have a few coins over there, Pan. Do you want to show people what you've got? Uh, yep, so uh, slightly, uh, slightly more modest in terms of the number I've picked up, but I picked up a couple of interesting things. So it's a bit of an interesting experience going around like with a video camera. I've been, you know, I asked the organizers beforehand and they were very, very helpful. Um, and some of the store holders have been, you know, kind of very accommodating. Some of them have given me some very weird looks. Um, uh, fortunately, a lot of them are actually kind of accompanied by like kind of younger family members who kind of, you know, they sort of go, what? And the family members are then able to explain what YouTube is. And um, ironically, actually, these two I picked up from one of the store holders who didn't want to be filmed, but, you know, was very, very polite about it. So first up is a uh, Victorian Gothic Florin. And I got this one for basically not a huge amount over spot, basically because it's um, not particularly numismatic. It's actually got a couple of um, big, bulky solder joints on it here, which um, suggests to me that this has been turned into a, a brooch or a, or a badge at some point. Um, which, you know, I kind of, I like the idea of coins that tell a little bit, little bit of a story. And so that one, you know, it's, other, apart from the um, actual, you know, kind of, big ugly welds on it uh, is actually in very very good condition this is actually quite a nice little gothic florin so I'm very happy with that um, another one that I kind of like just because of the stories it can tell is this piece here uh, and I'm sure you can tell immediately what this is uh, no you can't because it's actually worn completely smooth on this side uh, but it is a William the Third, and I think this is probably a half crown from the size of it uh, and you can see it's actually been countersamped by somebody. Uh, my best guess would simply be that it's been worn flat enough that people weren't entirely sure what it was, so giving it a countersamp was kind of a way of giving it a bit more of an authority, like, no, no, this is, this is a real coin, honest guff. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what I've got. Well, those, look, those look pretty cool. I, I love coins with stories. That's what got me interested in coins back when I got started collecting. Uh, and these Thalas have that. They have that kind of old history to them. Uh, for those of you who don't know, whilst they are dated 1780, they're just restrikes, they're modern restrikes. Uh, and these coins are even to this day used in the Middle East bazaars as trading tokens. So they've got a nice little bit of culture and history of, about them, and that's one thing that's really good. So I have to say, you've done very well there, Pan, if you've got these for sort of the relative spot price, because they come with a story, and I think that's what's important. If you stack what you like, and you like what you stack, then you can't go much wrong. So uh, that's, in my opinion, the best thing that you can get from a coin fair. Not necessarily the cheapest silver, the best silver, but the story that comes with the silver. That's the most important thing. So well done you, I have to say. And uh, is this your first coin fair? Uh, second, in fact. Actually, my, I did my first video after the last coin fair, uh, the one back in February. So, you know, this is sort of a, not exactly a, yeah, I'm going to say a homecoming for this. Well, uh, you know, for the, even for the second coin fair, these are good pickups. So I have to say, well done. Uh, but I am not finished for the day because uh, after we've finished filming this little segment for Pan, I'm going to go film with Pan himself and we're going to basically do the same thing. So if you want to go and see my vlog with some of these coins and a little bit more, then you can. I've got a 4K camera. Pan is just a mere fledgling in the YouTube community with his self-described old plasticky camera, but it still does a good job. So if you want to see some of these coins and Pan's coins in particular in 4K, have a look at my channel. Uh, and also, I'm not done for the day because I'm going to go back and look for some gold and I'll hopefully show you some of that gold a little bit later on today. So yeah, there we go. As always, link will be in the show notes. All right, folks, bye for now.